Greetings, Dan Halligan with Canta Games, and I'm here with a support video on servant abilities and use. This support video is referenced in the video instructional series for setting up a second edition game of Obsession with expansions. I have a lot of raw materials set up here, and it's important to understand that there's relatively simple core mechanics associated with the servants, but there are a number of exceptions or service tiles that will give additional abilities to servants and that's where it can get a little bit tricky. I'm going to start with this tile right here which is the servants hall. It is important to note that in the second edition of Obsession the servants hall requires a servant to be placed on the hall in order to gossip about somebody that you're playing against and when you gossip about them you steal a reputation from them and you add a reputation to you. And what you do is you have to place a servant on the servant's hall tile in your organizer. In the past, it was an automatic steal of reputation, which was a little overpowered. But the point I want to make is that any servant at all can do the gossiping. Gossiping was a fine art <laughs> and servants were the, um, the internet of the 19th century. So they had a lifelong practice of finding out secrets. So that's just a point I want to make as I get into individual servants. Every servant can be used when they gossip on the servants hall. And when they're placed there, they're placed there at the beginning of the turn because we use the servants hall on step two. And at the end of the turn, they're expended to expended service just as if that servant had been used during an activity. So set that aside. Let's start with Mr. Carson, the butler. And the butler has abilities on both tiles and cards. The most common tile that you'll see affiliated or associated with the butler is the butler's room. When you place the butler on the butler's room, they are able to hire two servants from the supply. When that's done, the butler and the servants will go to expended service on the player board. When this is flipped, you have the same ability on back to hire two servants from the servants for hire, or you can recruit a servant from another player, which would mean functionally to steal them. No violence is done to the game if you do not like take that mechanisms. It's very thematic. A quality servant was highly prized and would occasionally be recruited from one estate to the next. But if you don't wish to play with that, that's fine. It's not going to hurt the game. You can just exclude that rule. But when you do do that, you're able to take one servant from any location on the other player's player board, and then that servant and the butler would get expended into expended service and rotate into availability normally. So that's the butler's room. The butler also provides service on tiles where there's a, a particularly thematic reason for that to be the case. Uh, the most common is very grand events like a, a ball or um, a formal gathering in the stateroom. But here with the uh, perhaps some, some very important gentleman being in the billiards room with the, uh, the, the gentleman of the house, the butler would uh, pay special attention. So anywhere the butler is used on a tile, obviously you will see the silhouette and color of that butler on the tile. So the butler is used on various tiles of somewhat higher prestige and on the butler's room. And there are a select few guests. Here we have the Marquess of Thornhill. And on these types of cards, what the butler's function on these cards is, is to basically fawn over an elite guest. He's not carrying bags or helping him dress. What he is doing is he's making sure with his maximum attention that there is nothing that's being missed in the service of the Marquess here. That will sometimes lead to a conflict where if the Marquess was going to be playing billiards, the butler might be occupied there, in which case he was unavailable here. In that instance, you would need an underbutler to perform the role of the butler in keeping an eye on the presti very prestigious guest, or there is the capability of the hall boy, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself and I'll come back to him, to stand in for the butler 
and I will explain that a little bit later with the hall boy. So that's the uses of the butler. He could gossip on a servant's hall. He can hire. He can attend to a prestigious activity or a prestigious guest. Next, we'll talk about uh, Mrs. Hughes. The housekeeper was uh, truly, for one portion of the house, the manager of the house. Uh, all uh, foodstuffs, ordering, maintaining, I mean, uh, influential cooks might have a hand in, in advising the housekeeper, but the housekeeper had the purse of the house and uh, she controlled that. And that's why she's an essential servant on dining activities. So here the North Dining Room, it's not because she's making the dinner, but because she's made the dinner happen. We got to remember that all these events are the the seminal event in a long stay for any guests at the estate. And so she has a lot of work to do behind the scenes and that's why she's the essential servant. Now the housekeeper can also, if there's no ladies maid available without any extra tile or ability, the housekeeper can automatically stand in for a ladies maid on a card. There is the new retiring room and the ladies maid could also stand in there. This is a an ability that's intrinsic to the um, the the role that the housekeeper plays. She's going to step in to make sure that everything is handled appropriately. So that doesn't require any tile or special ability. She, but the, the, the ladies maid can't be available. The housekeeper is not going to unplug herself from the running of the downstairs when uh, there's a ladies maid sitting there in the uh, the servants hall twiddling their their fingers. There is an, a, a type of card similar to the Marquess. Here we have uh, the Dowager Countess Fairchild. This is actually a promo card. That's Margaret. And you'll see on some very prestigious guests, she is, for the same reason that the butler hovered, she is going to hover and ensure that most prestigious guest is taken care of. Of course, the housekeeper could gossip on the servant's hall if she so desired. Now we move on to Mr. Barrow, the underbutler. And the underbutler is a unique servant in that the servant cannot be hired. I know that we place him in servants for hire at the start of the game to underbutlers because they go along with the tile, which is the butler's pantry, the tile by which the underbutler is acquired. So there is never an ability to hire this underbutler. The underbutler only comes when the butler's pantry is acquired from the builder's market. Once that's acquired and that butler's pantry goes into your organizer, then the butler's taken from the servants for hire, put into expended service, and he will rotate into availability normally. So that's how the underbutler is acquired. Now the underbutler can perform any male service role excluding the useful man. But every other male service role, which would be the valet, would be the footman, would be the hall boy, would be the butler, then the underbutler can perform that action whether or not that other servant is available. The underbutler is a jack of all trades. He can go anywhere, he can put the finger in the dike, anywhere during an activity, he can go to the place of need. He can step in and hire servants for the butler. After all, an underbutler is a butler in training. He can just step right in for a valet. Uh, for a guest, even if he had a valet. Now typically, since the but underbutler is more flexible, you wouldn't use him preferentially over another servant that's available, like a footman or a valet, but you could if you wanted to. There's no, there's no uh, demand that that other servant not be available. He could step in for the footman and take care of a uh, very fancy garden party. So the underbutler has a lot of flexibility. Of course, he can gossip on the servants' hall. Now there is also a tile that I need to point out called the carriage house that comes in the upstairs downstairs expansion. Carriage house asks for a footman to uh, go along with the carriage. Either uh, a guest is leaving or another guest is arriving. It allows you to change the guest count. Now that uh, is a footman role, but again, the underbutler has the ability to stand in in any capacity whatsoever for those male service capacities 
outside of the useful man. He's not going to go ahead and put on overalls and get dirty, but he's going to perform all the other functions. Sorry, I didn't have my light on. The, <laughs> the under butler was doing things without any candles lit. But Mr. Bates, the valet, has a very simple function. He takes care of male guests, period. End of story. Now, there are promo tiles which get a little weird. I'm not going to spend any time going into the promo tiles. For the main core of the game, the valet has one function and one function only, and that is the care of male guests. Simple and done. He can also gossip on the servant's hall, but otherwise, male guests. Now, Anna, the lady's maid, used to be just as simple as the valet, female guests. That's all that she would take care of. She would supply that same level of personal service, getting dressed and undressed, laying out clothes, packing, and those types of things. And she now has one additional ability in addition to taking care of the, the ladies, and that is in the Wessex Expansion 2nd Edition, there is a retiring room. And credit to David Buckland, who is a, a critical advisor for me on the ways of Victorian lifestyle. The retiring room was a real thing. It was a temporary room. It would be a small room which would be converted for elegant ladies to um, repair their attire. And a lady's maid would be made available for that to happen. And so you will see this is the only, uh, outside of promotional tiles, I'm not going to touch on those, this is the only tile where you will find either a valid or a lady's maid, in this case the lady's maid as the essential servant that is required for that particular activity. Naturally, if this guest is going to the retiring room to uh, make a repair, you need an additional lady's maid. She can't do double duty. She can't do all the sewing or the other efforts uh, when there's other things that need to be attended to. The one tile being played is the seminal activity over an extended visit and these servants are in demand for the larger visit and that's why their availability is limited. So that's your lady's maid. Now we have James the footman and I love this. I love this meeple. One of my favorites. I don't know if the footman might be one of my favorites. But anyway, he is a very versatile servant. He's used a ton in outdoor activities or activities where there's um, more of a, a physical uh, element to them, you know, usually out of doors or some sort of sporting hunting type activities. And the footman also, uh, for a very select few guests, is um, an extra servant for either a demanding guest or a guest with a handicap, like with a war wound. He's just got to step in the breach and, and make things happen. Not frequently used on guests, but it is, uh, does happen occasionally. The footman has an upgrade tile that's specific for him, and it is the brushing room. When it gets purchased from the builder's market, it goes into the organizer under the service category. And from that moment forward, the footman has the ability to be a backup valet. Now, What's important about this, important to understand, is that the valet can't be available. He's going to be an inferior valet. So he's only going to be a backup valet when the numbers get beyond the capacity of the domestic staff to take care of every gentleman who's available. So the, the ability is ongoing, but the valet has to be unavailable for him to function in that capacity. In addition, we had talked about the carriage house. The carriage house has the footman is the essential servant. Now other servants are able to help out and I, we talked about the underbutler, I'll also talk about the hall boy, but it's important to understand that this is a uh, another source of demand. This stays in the organizer. If this were our column of service tiles and when you wanted to use the carriage house, the footman would be placed on the carriage house so that he could accompany the carriage for the purposes of altering the guest count. And then after that, at the end of the turn, he would be placed into expended service. Well, we finished our core servants, the servants that came with the original publication of Obsession, the butler, the housekeeper, the valet, the lady's maid, and the footman. 
There are four new servants with the upstairs downstairs expansion. And this is where it's important to understand the difference between essential servants which are indicated by the silhouetted icon. That's not optional, except for a select few applications. The four upstairs downstairs servants are optional. You won't find, again, except for a couple of exceptions we'll talk about, you won't find the routine silhouette of these servants on these tiles. They now are what we call supplemental servants. They are optional and they can add a benefit. And what are those benefits? So let's talk about Mrs. Patmore first. Actually, it would be Mrs. Puggins. Mrs. Puggins popped up during the Kickstarter, and that's, that's her name now. She's even in the rule book. So normally, let's before we use her, let's say we just have a normal, friendly game in the billiards room, and the butler is attending to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead, let me select Count Hoyos here. Let's say Count Hoyos is there. Now we have a four reputation that makes it possible to host in the billiards room. And we certainly can have Count Hoyos there as well. But um, there's three gentlemen which are to be invited. Let's say one of the gentlemen you wanted to invite was the Marquess. I mean, who wouldn't want to invite the Marquess? Well, you can't do it because the... The, the reserve of the aristocracy to, um, to be seen at uh, places below their station, if you will, um, would, would that sort of social restraint would prevent this from happening. That's what this mechanism is. It's about the hierarchy during, during Victorian England in the, uh, amongst the aristocracy. However, what Mrs. Puggins does, if you were to optionally, it's your choice, your discretion, you were to have her um, doing her magic in the kitchen, such as her reputation, such are the dishes that she prepares, that the social restraint of the Marquess is broken down and he will attend an activity at, a, at an estate that would be normally below, beneath him, if you will. And that extends to two levels above the reputation level on the player board. So that four, you could actually pretend that the Marquess's reputation level is four or pretend that that's six. He would now be willing to come to an activity. Very powerful. In addition, because of her skill, she adds one reputation. So you might say, my, my gosh, the, the cook is enormously powerful. She's powerful earlier in the game and she loses a little bit of her utility later in the game. If you've got a reputation that's approaching six in the last season and a half, you're going to find that she really has very little to do but to outperform in the kitchen and generate a little bit of reputation which you may not even need. So the cook is an interesting servant, critically valuable early, not as valuable late and you need the right combination of cards so it's not all it's not all uh, apples and honey. So we talked about supplemental service with the upstairs downstairs servants where it's optional. There are promo tiles out there where some crazy things happen, but there is an official tile that comes in the upstairs downstairs expansion called the renovated kitchen where the cook is the essential servant. It's important to understand that in this application, again, seeing the silhouette of the cook on the tile that she is required. However, she still, and this is a somewhat of a unique situation, she still is able to generate a point of reputation because of her skill. You might say, can she invite more prestigious guests? Well, that's actually the function of the tile. So yes, to a degree, um, she can do that, but the tile does it first. So this is a unique application for the cook and that's my daughter's cat. So the next upstairs downstairs servant we're going to talk about is the hall boy. The hall boy has a primary function and then has a couple of secondary functions. So let's take a look at the primary function. The primary function is that the hall boy can be very attentive to a guest and since a guest is staying 
at the country estate for an extended period of time. That hall boy uh, being at the beck and call of that guest, helping with uh, you know communication and correspondence and running letters to post and in in any way possible helping a guest, a guest who happens to have a monetary favor, which says a lot about who that guest is and what that relationship will mean to the family as far as increasing opportunities down the road. The hall boy enhances that monetary favor, so it is placed next to the favor that you want to enhance, and that would increase the pounds favor for Miss Adelaide Howe to 200 pounds. And that could be on a male or a female guest, not on a tile. If there was a tile where the pounds were increased, this is only personal attention to a guest for the duration of their visit. So that's the primary function of the hall boy. But the hall boy has a couple secondary functions. If you recall, we talked about the bottleneck that is dangerous, which is that the, let me go ahead and get a valet and give full service here. We have service being provided for the Marquess here. But even if the butler is available, the hall boy may stand in where, remember, the butler wanted to hover and make sure that, that everything went well. Well, he can assign that hall boy to essentially, that's where the name of the servant comes from, the hall boy who is typically a footman in training, a young boy of maybe 12 or 13, would be standing in that hallway outside the Marquess's quarters and would be at the beck and call of the Marquess. The same sort of thing that the butler was going to do personally, but now if there's an issue that demands the attention of the butler, the hall boy can dash to the butler and let him know that the Marquess has a need beyond his capabilities. So the hall boy can stand in on that card, which frees the butler up to uh, perhaps coordinate a, a, a very prestigious event like a ball or a formal gathering. When the hall boy is used in this capacity, he does not generate the extra 100 pound favor. If the Marquess had a pounds favor, the hall boy's not going to increase that. He's focused on really being the liaison for the butler. So that's a, uh, a secondary ability of the hall boy. The hall boy can also stand in for the footman on the carriage house. If you think about it thematically, what is the carriage house? It, we're, we're referring to actually the name of the footman comes from running behind carriages in 16th and 17th century Britain. Uh, and in this case, they, they ride along the back of the carriage and they're there to carry luggage, to uh, help a lady in and out of the carriage and so on. And the hall boy can certainly perform that function. So he, the hall boy can stand in for that footman on the carriage house in order to change the guest count for an activity. So that's the hall boy. Our next servant, the head housemaid, has again, like the hall boy, a primary function and then some secondary function. The primary function for the head housemaid is to consider her the most well-connected domestic in the county, in that area of the county. So when you want to know the lowdown on a particular guest, when you are considering adding them to your, your circle of acquaintances, this is, this is the lady to, uh, to talk to. And so what she does is she screens any invite. So any invite, whether you see it on a card or on a tile, she provides the intelligence that is going to make for wise, wise choices in your uh, connections. Even if there is already a screening function going on, so here you'll see C2 take one in the English garden, she would do uh, she would add to that screening function, C3 take one. And that's how she works. She is the one who mitigates the risk of a blind card draw or gives you additional cards to look at. 
and that is her primary function. However, she has some secondary functions. The first secondary function that she has is she can stand in for the housekeeper on a card. For those few, just like with the Marquess and the hall boy, just for those few female guests where the housekeeper wants to hover because they're such an elite guest, the head housemaid can stand in. That does not require any special tile. That's an innate ability of the housekeeper. Note that when she is performing this function of standing in for the housekeeper, being the liaison for the housekeeper's hovering, when she's doing that, if there was an invite on this card, she does not provide a screening function. She's not out um, gathering information about potential uh, people to add to the family circle of acquaintances. She's actually doing something else. So her, her primary function is disabled when she's doing the role of the housekeeper for an elite guest. Now there is a tile. This is an official tile that comes in the upstairs downstairs expansion. There's two of them actually. And this tile um, grants her an ability just like the brushing room granted the footman the ability to be a backup valet. This grants her that ability to be a backup female servant and that would be either a housekeeper or a lady's maid. So she would be able, if you had this tile in your organizer, she'd be able to stand in for a lady's maid. She would not do a screening function over here, she would just stand in for the lady's maid. She would be able to stand in for the housekeeper on a tile. Any Act, any action that the housekeeper and I should push that back a little bit any action that the housekeeper and the lady's maid could do the head housemaid can step in that might even include the retiring room here if you have that tile but once again you have to have this tile like the brushing room this does not hire a housekeeper just like the brushing room does not hire a footman this actually is just a tile that is purchased that grants an ability, ongoing ability, to a head housemaid that you would have. Finally, we have the useful man. And as you may guess, the useful man is rather useful. So he has um, what I would call three primary functions and two secondary functions. Primary function would be that anytime when you're ready to make a purchase from the market, you put the useful man on a tile in the market that useful man will discount that tile by 100 pounds. He's going to essentially help with the project. And that will discount the amount that they have to pay to outside sources. So that would be 300 pounds. If you have a modifier, here we have minus 200 and 300. He will not reduce that to zero. But if this were over here, he would reduce that from 200 to 100. It's an important thing to understand. So. He reduces the cost of any tile that's placed on, whether it's in the reserve. I could have the housekeeper's room in the reserve here, which is a 300-pound tile. That would be a 200-pound tile. So anywhere in the market or the market reserve that the useful man is deployed, he will discount it by 100, but it can never be zero. The next use of the useful man is to increase the productivity of a village fair. So let's say we're going to round nine here and we have a village fair. In this scenario, the player has not chosen to invest in the success of the village fair. And as a result, they would normally realize absolutely nothing from there. But the useful man can be a plan B, if you will. Instead of investing, they do the very minimalist thing of sending this useful man down to the village fair. So even though that tile's not been flipped, at the beginning of round nine, you just place the useful man on the village fair tile, and the player now realizes 200 pounds just from the activity of the useful man helping to build stalls, move goods, boxes, crates, and be generally helpful to the enterprise. Now, if the family had taken the time to invest in the success of the fair, they would normally receive two reputation and 300 pounds from that fair. Adding the useful man to that planning effort would actually make that 500 pounds and two reputation. So he gets the same uh, 200 pound boost. He gives the same 200 pound boost to the fair, 
but it depends on whether or not the tile is flipped to determine what the total amount is. So that's his second ability. When he's done, he would be rotated into expended service just like any servant used during a turn. Next, the useful man has the ability to break down this limitation here. Normally, you would not be able to host this activity in the English garden because the reputation level of the family is at three, but the English garden has a prestige rating of four, meaning that we still have two more ticks of reputation before the family really rounds into shape enough to pull off uh, this kind of uh, somewhat prestigious event. But the useful man can basically help in an extraordinary way get a, uh, an incomplete renovation ready for a little bit of early use. So for a single turn, if the useful man is placed on that prestige rating of four, he will effectively temporarily lower that prestige rating by one so that this activity could be hosted. So the useful man there could permit this activity to be hosted. That's his third of three sort of core activities. There are two useful man abilities which are one-time use. You can remove from the player board, remove your useful man and discard him from the game. And by doing that, you're essentially giving him a, a one-time quest, if you will, which is to find a builder who can build the improvement that you want. So what happens is that you're able to search the bag for a particular improvement. So let's say I really wanted the main library. I can discard the useful man from the game. I can remove the 800 pound tile and return it to the bag and place the main library in the market at the most expensive position and then I'm able to buy it. If you can't buy it, you've just wasted a useful man. So obviously you're going to make sure that you can afford it. So that, that would allow you to complete difficult objectives or perhaps go for a milestone, but you lose the use of the useful man and you cannot hire another one. That's you only, you only can have one useful man per game of obsession and you can't hire another one. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And the second is that you can discard the useful man from the game to refresh the market using standard market refresh rules and populate the market with new tiles. So there's five abilities for the useful man, and he has a card all to himself that describe those abilities. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little tutorial on servant abilities and uses.